let us discuss the next option which is protect line elements this is to protect the line elements which are of smaller size than the ignored size defined within the ignore size option we define some size but this option that is protect line elements protects the line elements against this size even if the size is above these line elements even if the given size goes above these line elements Ignore size as we know is used to filter out sliver small surfaces but if specific small surface patch is to be retained this option can be useful. This is where this option comes. Protect given line elements. Obviously this option will only be activated after activating respect line elements. That is we have to activate this respect line element first and then this option becomes activated. Next is smooth boundaries. This is dedicated smoothing option available in ICM CFD which we will see in lectures that will follow. This is only preliminary option which smooths the surface mesh after meshing. Its effect can be observed in figure. As seen in the figure, we can observe the displacement of the nodes as a result of smoothing process. This is not really useful option as user don't have control over the process and it is uh, used very rarely actually. Now we will see the options that are related to interior. First is force mapping. As we all know, uh, structured map meshes are always better than paved unstructured ones. This option tries to force the mapped scheme on surfaces and its extent can be controlled by slider bar. You can see the slider bar here. Default value is 0 and for hybrid meshes, 0.2 is preferred. We can see the effect of force mapping. In case 1, it is 0 0.10 and case 2, we have increased it to 1. So it is somehow trying to force map a structured mapped mesh rather than an unstructured paved mesh. So the degree of structured map mesh increases as we go on increasing the force mapping index or the slider bar. Next is maximum node adjustment. In many cases, though surface can be meshed using mapping schemes, but due to different node count on opposite sides of surfaces, it might not be possible to get an exact mapping scheme. In such cases, this option allows ICM CFD some flexibility to vary the node count on curves to fit the mapping scheme. Next is project to surfaces. Once surface is meshed, interior elements should be projected to the surfaces so that they take the shape of geometry which has been meshed. This option allows user to specify whether mesh should be projected onto the surface or not. But by default, this option is always activated. So in figure, we can see an original geometry. Case 1, when we don't have the project to surface option. In this case, the mesh is not projected to the geometry as we can see. But in the second option, we have the project to surface option enabled and so we can uh, see the effect of that, that the uh, mesh is actually projected onto the surface. The next option related to interior is adopt mesh interior. This is where the tick option is. As we have discussed earlier, patch dependent mesh starts or begins from curves and then interior is meshed. Due to this methodology, irrespective of surface mesh size specified, this algorithm ignores the surface mesh size and the surface mesh size only depends on curve parameters. This option allows us to coarsen the mesh to surface mesh size. The growth ratio can be between 1 to 3 and can be specified as surface height ratio in the local surface mesh parameters. Same can be observed in the example. When the adapt mesh interior is ticked, this is how the change in the interior mesh or surface mesh size is happening. Curve mesh size use is 0.5 and surface mesh size is 2.5. So this basically, uh, this option basically allows us to coarsen the surface mesh by some degree. Next is orient surface normal option. This option orients normals of the surface mesh in the same direction as the surface normals. This option is enabled by default.
let us move on to discuss patch dependent repair parameters. Patch dependent algorithm is not very robust in generating surface mesh and it generally fails during meshing of surfaces which have complex shapes or which are not properly imported whenever you import the geometry. Now in this case there is a try harder option which we will discuss in this particular slide. The try harder option depending on which settings we specify it decides what action should the measure take in case of failure of meshing algorithm on particular surfaces. There are improvement levels which try to improve mesh by using various smoothening schemes and the levels that we set controls which should be used. Uh, the try harder uh, option or try harder level varies from level 0 to level 3. So we will discuss level 0 first. In level 0 without trying any further to mesh the surface problem will be reported and surface will be put in subset. As you can see here that surface has been put in subset that is a failed surface. Next level 1. If the measure fails simple triangulation is attempted to fix the problem. This is applicable only for all tri and quad dominant mesh types. Then is the level 2. Sometimes failure of meshing algorithms may be due to merging of surfaces while using the make dormant option. This level that is level 1 will try again after making dormant curves active. Last is the level 3. Octree measure is one of the robust measure available in ICM if everything else fails. Surface will be meshed by using the octree measure in level 3. Let us go into detail of these improvement levels. In level 0 only Laplacian smoother is used. It will not improve the quality but improves the node distribution. Now level 1. This will mesh any fail loop with an STL method if element types quad dominant or all try have been selected. This makes the measure more robust. Very bad quadrilaterals will be split into triangles. This is the most used option. Uh, this is same as level 1 but it has flexibility to combine try to quad and to split quad from try. But this has, an, uh, has a flexibility to, com to combine try to form quads and to split quad to form try that is triangular elements. Level 3 this is also same as level 1 but has ability to move nodes off the curve to improve the quality. Now we will discuss other repair options that are available that is respect dormant boundaries and the relax dormant boundaries for smoothening option. These are available here within the repair section of the options panel. So first is respect dormant boundaries. Dormant boundaries are not generally respected during patch dependent meshing mainly because they were made dormant in first place so that they should not be considered during the meshing. This particular option that is respect dormant boundaries overrides that earlier selected option that is it allows user to change by activating this option. User has to use restore dormant entities option. So uh, dormant entities will be considered while meshing. Next option is relax dormant boundaries for smoothening. This option is activated once respect dormant boundaries is enabled. This allows smoothener to move nodes of the dormant curves to improve mesh quality. At the end we discuss the general options then we discuss the boundary options then we discuss the interior options and lastly we discuss the repair options. So at the end we will see some of the standard shapes meshed by using patch dependent algorithm. So we will discuss three shapes that is a, a square, a, a circle and a triangular shape geometry and this is patch dependent meshing algorithm.